Rumble is live. Maybe it's Rumble. Oh, man. Okay, everybody just hang in there. Oh, I think I found it. I found it. What was going on there? Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. I had a double windows open, and with that is bad. Welcome to the Coming Apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bigley. Forgive me. Forgive me. It is difficult, but we will figure this thing out. We are live at Rumble. We are live at Rumble. Are you serious? Are you serious? Um, what? Or silver. America the... Thousands have approached no... Oh, and the Rumble channel. And, of course, our website at paulbigbyprising.com. Because we just never know when they're going to do this to us. They... They did it to us on the Thursday night, 10 minutes before the Thursday night live broadcast, which I thought was just unbelievable. Israel Hall is saying, Rumble is live, so thank you, Izzy. So anyway, let me just say welcome, everybody. Let me put a shout out right now, if I can, to for noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestment.com. The second largest and third largest bank runs in history happened last month. That's unbelievable. The government is taking steps now to guarantee all deposits. That means more money printing. Thousands have approached Noble Gold Investments to secure their wealth with gold. Gold is the most stable asset outside of government's control. Hurry, go to noblegoldinvestment.com or pick up the phone and call them tomorrow at 877-646-5347 and secure uh, your wealth. Matter of fact, they'll also give you, if you get a, uh, a, a gold IRA set up, they'll give you this incredible five ounces of pure silver. America is a beautiful coin. Five ounces of pure silver. They'll give you this coin for free just because you set up with noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestment.com. Investment.com. All right, guys, we got a lot to talk about. Behind me is the train derailment in Montana. What? Train derailment in Montana. It's not far from where uh, Israel and Kristen actually used to live. You could see those, those, there's 25 rail cars derailed and they spilled into the river. Now, how many train derailments are there going to be? And how come every time there's toxic material of some sort? And isn't it strange? They always spill into the rivers. They don't, they don't just derail somewhere, you know, you know what I'm saying? They either derail right like in some little town in Ohio or some little town in Minnesota, or they spill into the rivers. Can that be possible? Can that just be possible that every time it does that? Or is the T word, not, not trains, but should we be talking about the T word, terrorism? Are they among us? Uh, are they among us? We're, we're worried about aliens and Nephilims among us, but maybe we should be worried about the T word, the terrorist among us. At least 25 cars of this freight train have derailed in western Montana. As you can see, it's just a disaster. It's the last thing we need. But this freight train derailed in paradise of all places. Paradise, Montana has just, there's trouble in paradise. Paradise, Montana, that train derailed today according to Sanders County Sheriff's Office. Approximately 25 rail cars derailed this morning near Highway 135 according to dispatcher Bill Brown and he told CNN this. The train derailed on the banks of the Clark Fork River approximately 200 miles northwest of Bozeman. Images from the scene show some of the cars are in the river, as you can see. The sheriff's office did not provide any more information on what the train was hauling. However, Brown said uh, they're not sure what was on the train, including hazardous materials. The Sanders County Fire Department is on the scene responding to the derailment and the Office of Emergency Management. And where's Pete Buttigieg? Well, I was looking for his tweet this morning, but I didn't see it. But I know that... Pete is all over this stuff. He doesn't want this stuff to go 
uh, you know, you, he's the Secretary of Transportation, he's in charge, responsible for these things that keep happening. Guys, I have more breaking news. I'm going to tell you about these tornadoes that did devastating destruction and killed 26 people uh, in Arkansas, which is really strange when last week we had tornadoes that killed 26 people in Mississippi. So you have these back-to-back -back killer storms uh, that are just, and, and more to come as we're in an apocalyptic era. But I have breaking news, uh, this, uh, this coming to me. This was by Amir Safari. I want to thank Israel Hall for getting this to me this afternoon. But Amir Safari, some of you know him, on his Telegram channel uh, just about an hour and a half ago, he broke this news at 527. He said, Moshi Sarada, Moshi Sarada. He's a parliament member, and he's a member of Benjamin Netanyahu's Lukid party. He admitted in an interview on Channel 14 News today that last week Israel was on the cusp of a military coup. I, I, I repeat, Israel was on the cusp, he said, of a military coup. Moshe Sadata, a former senior attorney in the attorney general's office in Israel until a few years ago. He is a whistleblower already on the corruption that has taken place in the government. He added that the army generals threatened the government, which led to the decision of halting the legislation on the judicial reform that Netanyahu was doing. So in other words, Benjamin Netanyahu trying to do some type of reforms, uh, judicial reforms, restructuring how their democracy is to work, because they're not a republic like we are. They're just a democracy without a constitution. Basically, they need a constitution so that their Supreme Court, when they rule, they rule based on the constitution. Right now, these 15 judges in Israel rule based on the Torah, on the first five books of the Bible. They make decisions based on the Word of God. You might say, well, then why would you want to mess with that? Well, there's two reasons. You don't want to mess with the Word of God ever, but your Constitution should be based on um, the Word of God. You can't leave it up to 15 people to interpret the Bible for you, okay? At some point, you have to get the people to agree to a constitution, vote on a constitution. And I think that's part of the reform. So what Ninja was trying to do was, also the, judge, the Supreme Court justices in Israel are not chosen by the prime minister and then approved by the Knesset. Like in America, they're chosen by the president and they're approved by the Senate. And then they're put on the bench. And see, there's the checks and balances. They don't have that in Israel. Each justice that's on the bench, when he gets tired or she gets tired or think they're going to die or whatever, they choose their own successor. And the legislators have nothing to do with it. Neither does the prime minister. Neither do the populace. That's where you, this is why things are out of balance. And that's what Netanyahu was trying to do. So because of this reform efforts by Netanyahu, you just saw thousands, and I mean thousands of people, protesting in the streets hundreds of thousands protesting in the streets and so uh you know something had to be done there had to be some type of a, an approach to this and uh, what happened was the mil apparent uh, according to amir safari the military made a decision that uh they were going to remove benjamin Netanyahu by force and take over the government. They were about ready to do these. These army generals were getting ready to make a military coup on the government. And apparently, that's according to Amir Safari, and that's according to a former parliament member, Moshi Sadada. And so you can imagine if that would have happened. Had there been a general, the generals of the nation of Israel had taken over the nation, you would have had a state of chaos then. Who's in charge? The government has just come apart. There's been a military coup. And then you, I guarantee you this would have been bad. Because I guarantee you Joe Biden, the President of the United States, would have said, hold on a minute. 
Israel doesn't even have, they're not even a stable government now. Let's withhold all funding. Let's back up. Let's make sure we get this thing restructured with, uh, and, and so they had to make sure they put their own people in position where they could control Israel. Uh, or maybe it would have been George Soros who would have pulled that off because he's the guy who funds the protesting anyway. So this is what I'm trying to say, guys. When you see all this massive protesting in France, it's not good. When you see it in Israel, it's not good. When you see it in America, it's not good. Not when they're burning down the cities. Not when they're threatening. And that's what we saw happen on the entire year of 2020 here in the United States. 35 different cities, violence, rioting, vandalism. People got hurt bad. People died. It went on all year long in the year 2020 of the election year. It went on all year long. As soon as the election's over, everybody's been quiet. Why? Because they got what they wanted. They got their man out of there. They got the man out of there. And it wasn't the populace. It wasn't the American people. It was basically George Soros-funded um, protesters. That same mentality, that same thing is going on right now, folks. So we really need to pray for Israel. So I just want to give you that update that is going on. Now, let's talk about the tornadoes because they are happening. Again, we want to welcome everybody who's watching our backup channel at Paul Baby Prophecy. That backup channel is three Paul Baby Prophecy 362, and that's how you find it. And also, we got people watching at our website. A lot of people watching at our website, paulbigleyprophecy.com. You can always watch the live shows there that we're on. And we're also live on Rumble, okay, right now from what I understand, and I'm going to just click over there and see if what I, we're live at Rumble, I don't know how that works, but there is 409 people watching over at Rumble, I click there, is that what and drinking water before what did I do, pounds. what did I do, <laughs> I don't know what I did, anyway, uh, we are live at Rumble. Can, can I check something because I don't know what I'm doing? Yeah, I see the chat room over there, Rumble. But for some reason, it's not playing. I have anymore. Saturday was silent, and surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? And Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of our dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling.
is harmonize and prophesy if you guys haven't got a, a copy of this you really need to get this it's powerful harmonize and prophesy and also let me tell you this we also if you haven't got formerly jacob cds i have these available i have these at my website as well so you might want to get these some powerful songs uh from formerly jacob absolutely also kevin copley remember him well he finally has shipped me 50 new cds uh, that will that we'll be able to ship. So if you only fifty, it's all you can get me fifty. Okay, when they sell out, they're gone. But if you have been wanting to get one, go to my website and order Kevin Copley's One More Day. Okay. Now I, also Kevin Wilson, we have four of his CDs uh, on our website. You got four of mine. So there's plenty of music. You guys might want to go there and and check that out. Let me tell you what else is going on. I want to tell you right now, we got 470 people with us live on our backup channel. Our backup channel is Paul Begley Prophecy 362. What? Yeah, don't ask me. You can you can you can go to the search bar, Paul Begley Prophecy channel, and it won't give it to you. Can you believe this? I, it's got 25,000 subscribers over there on our backup channel. <laughs> and uh Let's get that built up. So there's 478 people there, and there's 500 and uh, 
seven people at Rumble right now. So we're running pretty nick and tuck. And there's over a thousand, there's, there's quite a few more than a thousand plus at our website at publiclyprophecy.com. So three different locations there. Plus there's people watching on Facebook and on Twitter. So uh, this way, is, this is how we do it. We cannot go live on our main YouTube channel for 90 days. They hit us with a, um, a strike 10 minutes before Mike came on the uh, Mike from around the world came on the air last Thursday night and they said 90 days. So yeah, we're in YouTube jail for 90 days or okay, so all right, so 90 80, 87 more days to go. So where are we going to be? Pastor right here. I'm going to continue to do YouTube videos on the main channel. Just I just keep uploading YouTube videos on the main channel. But all live broadcasting will be done on Rumble and on Publicly Prophecy channel, Publicly Prophecy 362, okay? Publicly Prophecy 362. So that's where all the Thursday night broadcasting will be done and all the Sunday night live broadcasting and any other live broadcasting that we may do, all right? So yeah, they, yeah, again, I've been on here. You know, why would YouTube bother me? I mean, 20, 200, I have 240 million views. Why bother that? 240 million views. That's not, uh, that's nothing to sneeze at, guys. That's a lot of views. And we're not monetized. They never monetized us. Never gave us one penny for that. Um, despite... All these guys who love to do these videos. How much is Paul Bagley's net worth? I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, if you guys, if you guys are so worried about it, why don't you pitch in and, and <laughs> do something about why they won't monetize us? Uh, it would have really made a major difference, you can imagine. So, but you know, God said, "I'll supply every need. I'll supply the need. The, the gospel of Jesus Christ is going out, and so God is the supplier. He's the provider." We don't worry about it. That's why we don't worry about it. That's why we just keep doing what we're supposed to do. Um, there's also a 7.0 earthquake, guys. A 7.0 a seven point earthquake hit Papua New Guinea um, today. Very powerful. Matter of fact, let me just take a look at the earthquake map because there was some serious uh, shaking. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. Matter of fact, San Diego yesterday. San Diego, 4.5 earthquake shook San Diego. Remember, just about two weeks ago, I did a, a live broadcast where I said, I'm telling you, this is the area that the scientists are concerned about. And, and they, but it's not just there. There's a lot of places in the world. But let's, t let's take a look at what's going on on the earthquake map. In the last 24 hours, we've had a 4.6. This is a powerful quake in the subduction the Cascadia subduction zone. This is where Steve Quayle says, look out! Mike from the world don't like it either. 4.6 earthquake, Vancouver Island in Canada. 4.6 San Juan, Argentina. 4.9, the Fiji Islands. 4.5, Papua New Guinea. 4.0 uh, was in uh, the Revilla Island region. That's down... Southern Mexico, way down there. Um, 2.9, Puerto Rico. 2.5, Fox Islands in the Aleutian Islands up there in Alaska. 4.4, Earthquake, Japan. 2.7, Puerto Rico. 4.4, Fiji. 4.4, Southern Iran. 5.5, the Flores Sea. That's over in the Indonesia area. 4.3, the Fiji Islands again. It's a lot of shaking there. 4.4, Papua New Guinea. 4.5, the Kareem Sea in Indonesia. 2.8, Petrolia, California. 4.5, Ecuador. They've already had a killer quake there about a week ago. They don't need this. 4.3, just off the coast of Costa Rica. Mm, that's in that uh, cocoa, that cocoa quake, uh, cocoa quake. Uh, fault line area that Mike's so worried about. 4.6 in Argentina. 4.4 Indonesia. 2.9 Hawaii. 2.6 Central Alaska. Very strange place for a quake. 7.0. It was a 7.4. Uh, 
but it's now it's a 7.0 earthquake uh, in Papua New Guinea this afternoon. 3.8, powerful quake, Hawaii. 4.9, again, Indonesia. 2.7, again, Central Alaska. 5.5, the South China Sea, very strong quake. 2.9, the Aleutian Islands up there in Alaska. 3.7, Mona Passage, okay? And that's, again, over in the Caribbean area. Uh, 3.9, Baja California, Mexico. 3.9, that's just below San Diego. And San Diego just had a 4.5 the day before. And that just happened. This 3.9 off the coast of Baja California, Mexico, that just happened uh, 29 minutes ago. 29 minutes ago. So that one just happened. And we just had a 2.6 in Alaska 21 minutes ago. Okay, so there's a, the earth is shaking and quaking. The devil's back is breaking. Uh, our minds are aching, certainly. And uh, there's a lot going on. So you have you know, this unbelievable uh, train derailment, another train derailment. Can you believe that? Train derailment. Montana, 25 cars in the river. We don't know if they got has, hazardous material or not. The media, uh, the, the, the officials, the government are being very, very quiet about it. So we don't know uh, what's happening there, but we're gonna keep our eyes open to see what they say, if we can get any information. It's a beautiful river up there, 200 miles from Bozeman. That's the last thing these people want, you know. Um, uh, also, we had a tornado that tore through seven states, killing 26 people yesterday. We also almost had a military coup uh, three or four days ago in Israel, the generals were ready to take the government away from the lawmakers. They were getting ready to just do a military coup and take over the nation. Futurists of the 1990s predicted that we'd be living underwater or riding flying cars by this point. And we're not quite there. But some have some tech gurus who predicted how the world will look like in 2050, and some fear that AI will have enslaved humans, or that climate change will have made large swaths of the world uninhabitable. Other predictions include making contact with aliens will have happened, but whether or not that's a bad thing still remains unknown <laughs> to some people. Uh, it's not all doom and gloom, though, uh, with technology expected to have made the afterlife possible. What? No, God makes the afterlife possible. Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. Oh, no, no, don't get me started right now. Uh, but anyway, there's eight things that the uh, tech gurus and experts believe that will be what things will be like in the year 2050. AI overlords could be ruling the world. AI overlords. They believe could be ruling the world right now people are focused on ai potentially causing job losses but the reality is it could be far worse according to uh, uh, george stockoff the chief strategy officer for the global agency ddb emea who created the ai tool the uncreative agency he says people tend to overestimate the effects of new technology in the short run and underestimate those effects in the long run. This is known as Amara's Law. Right now we are at the peak of AI hype. People are panicking about white collar jobs being destroyed by the GPT, chat GPT. Um, it seems like an exaggeration, but by the year 2050, AI will have profoundly reshaped our world, he says. There is a dark AI future where those who control AI will gain huge power while 99% of the population will be disenfranchised, slaves to the AI world. The AI lords will control the world's data and run the rest of us into their serfs. The alternative is a bright AI scenario where everyone benefits from AI through better health care 
faster transportation and less pollution. And if you believe that, I got some, if you believe that, I got some oceanfront property in Arizona. From my front porch, you can see the sea. I got some oceanfront property in Arizona. If you buy that, I'll throw the Golden Gate in free. Oh, yes, I know George Strait threw it out there, but look, look. CERN might be in charge. AI could be in charge of CERN. Guys, AI is in charge of CERN. Will we burn? Should we be concerned about CERN? Have you guys got your DVD yet for CERN? Get the, get it now! Go to my website, paulbakerybrophecy.com. Get it now! Concerned. Jim Baker said to me, this was the best uh, webinar we've ever done. And he had already said once before, the best one we ever did was the one, Armies of the Antichrist. You guys remember that one, right? And uh, I said, but what about Deep Impact? He hasn't seen Deep Impact yet. I said, you got to get this one. This one too, but he hasn't seen it. But this, he had originally said this was, incre this was an incredible webinar. If you haven't gotten this, you should go to our website and order Armies of the Antichrist. Man, we had 11 DVDs in this one. 11 DVDs in this one. Okay? But this one, he said, is the best we've ever done. It's got seven DVDs called Kids. And the information on this one is incredible. But uh, I think Deep Impact, which we just did, uh, we did this one back in uh, December. I still think this one could be, okay? And what about the one we just did? Cataclysmic Apocalypse, which you can still get a ticket for that one. Anyway, uh, these, these uh, webinars are so informative is why we do it. It's why people uh, renown, I mean, Cataclysmic Apocalypse, was the most watched uh, webinar we've ever done. The one we just did, that was the most watched, most ordered webinar we've ever done. The information is incredible in it. Mike from around the world tells you about the Stone Steps dream. And Stan Dale tells you about his dream of 1997, of the uh, underground volcano explosion that destroys New Zealand. And plus all the rest of the information these guys did. So if you haven't got your ticket for that, you can still go to our website at paulbabyprophecy.com and get your ticket for this. Okay, get the ticket. Don't miss it. Oh, and guess what? Uh, also, machines really will do most of the work, and basic wage will become common, freeing us to enjoy more leisure time and realize ourselves as human beings. This will require a drastic change in our society, though, where you need to have less, own nothing, and you will like it. And realize ourselves as human beings. This will require a drastic change in our society, though, where you need to have less, own nothing, and you will like it. I don't think so. I, I don't think people want that. Uh, what about microchips in your skin? Yeah, people will commonly implant chips inside their bodies. This will help enhance them, says Heather Delaney, founder of the Gallium Ventures, a tech PR and, and commons consultancy in London. The microchip will monitor the conditions of the body and enable people to stay in touch with their health. Yeah, and your soul. Oh, don't worry, you'll lose your soul, but that's okay. Uh, as long as you're happy, be happy. It's okay. Yeah, just take the mark. Uh, the chip will... No, that's craziness. But wait a minute, there's more. Uh, she said, looking towards 2050, I expect to see growth in a number of areas in tech, including biohacking, Biohacking, uh, also do-it-yourself form of human enhancement, of human augmentation, do-it-yourself, in which people can attempt to change the aspects of their biology. They can help improve their health and performance. You can even manipulate and alter your own DNA. Passover, and I want to share with you, some of you have already been contacting me, Pastor Paul, some folks are already sending in their Passover offerings, and they're asking, what do we do? And and listen, I'm going back to Israel. If, if, if I believe I'm going to go back this summer to do some filming for a documentary on the sacred incense and other things that are going on that is unbelievable right now. And so it's not a tour. It just be uh, I'm just going there for filming. But if I go, 
I'm going to go back. It's, I'm going back no matter what, but it could be this, this summer. If I go for about a week and do this filming, I will also go to the wall, and I will take your prayer request to the wall, okay? The next time I go, so whether it's this summer or next fall or whenever it is, the next time I go to Israel, I'll be taking all your prayer requests from this Passover offering. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Exodus, and if you go with me real quick here for a second, let's go to Exodus chapter 23. Listen to how you can have seven blessings, including your whole year. A lot of people are worried about what to do with the economy and all the instability with the banking. People are wondering, how do I know what to do? I'm going to show you what to do. And everyone out there who's ever given Passover offerings in the past can tell you God has blessed them and has done things that they never dreamed of and has opened doors. It's incredible. Let me read to you what it says. In the book of Exodus, chapter 23, there's seven blessings God says to be faithful and bring your offering unto the Lord. And when you do this, he says, but look, tell everybody not to come. Don't come empty-handed. Everyone give something. Give your best offering you can. And what I want you to do is include it with prayer requests. Your special prayer requests that you want us to take to the wall when we go. Okay? Now, in uh, Exodus 23, it says this. Verse 20, Behold, I will send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Okay? But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, I will be an enemy against your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. So listen to this. As you're giving your Passover offering, one of the blessings that you'll receive is God will send an angel to protect you, to walk with you, and to bless you, and to help lead and guide you through the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? Also, this angel, a second blessing, is the angel says... Well, when the angel shows up, then the Lord says, I will become um, an enemy of your enemies. If, there, if there's people who have been coming against you, if there's people who hate you, if there's, if there's people who are going to rise up against you, if there's situations you've been dealing with, God says, the Lord himself says, because of your Passover offering, he will become an enemy against your enemies. David said, the battle's not mine, but it belongs to the Lord. And so the Lord will, will stand his ground for you. He will stand uh, and defend you. He will bless you, and he will become an enemy against your enemies. That's the second. So the first blessing is you'll get an angel. Second blessing is God will become an enemy against your enemies. The third one is God will prosper you. Look what it says. And, verse 25, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. What? So he says, I will prosper you. That's number three. I will heal you. That's number four. And uh, so, so I'll, I'll bless your bread, your food, your livelihood, your finances, you might as well say, is what it's meaning. I will bless you, your, your finances, your, your livelihood, your well-being, your bread and your water. And also, I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. So there you go. There's number three, number four. And then he says, and, I love this one, uh, and there, and look, and I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. There shall also, the Bible says, there shall... Nothing cast their young nor be barren. I'll make your family prosperous and multiply and grow and 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 bring. Uh, you will not be barren in the land, and the number of your days I will fulfill. In other words, your life will be last longer. So let's get this. Number one, I'm going to send an angel from heaven to bless you. Number two, I'll be an enemy against your enemies. Number three, I will bless your food and water and your finances. Number four, I will heal you if you're sick. Number five. And I will bless you with a long life. Okay? A long life. And then he goes on to say, in other words, the number of your days will be uh, fulfilled. 
and I will send my fear before thee, and I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all your enemies turn their backs unto thee. I'll make your enemies run from you. I'll defend you. I'll bless you. I'll lead you. I'll guide you. And then he says, and I will send hornets before thee. I'll drive out those Hittites and Canaanites and Hittites and Jebusites and Moabites and termites and pesticides and pestis parasites and everything else. And I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. But little by little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and blessed, and prosperous, and inherit the land. And I will set, so listen to the blessing. So God's saying, look, I'll, if you are faithful, and, you're, and some of you have all been faithful for years now, every year of your Passover offering, say, Pastor, what do I do? Send your Passover offering. Passover starts Wednesday, April 5th. So between April 5th and April 13th, we're receiving the Passover offerings. You can start with your Passover offering tonight. Start tonight, and we're going to go all the way to April 13th, through April 13th, receiving the Passover offerings. Plus, I'm going to be doing uh, the Passover blessing over you from the offerings that come in. So we'll be doing that. Now listen to this. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even to the Sea of the Philistines, he's saying this to Israel, and from the desert to the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land unto your hand, and thou shalt drive them out from before thee. So this is the rest of the prophecy that God gives the nation of Israel. So you will receive from your Passover offering, because you're giving it by faith, giving it by faith, you will receive, God will send an angel to you, to a, he will assign an angel. Can somebody understand what that means? When God in heaven takes the time to assign an angel specifically for you. Are you serious? That's why the Lord said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. So he'll sign an angel specifically for you. He will be the enemy against your enemies. Praise God. He'll be an enemy against your enemies. He will prosper you, your finances, your food, your water, your bread, he says there. He said, and I will heal you. Praise God. I mean, this. What, let's think about all the things we pray for. Lord, bless our families. Lord, heal my body. Lord, Help protect my finances. Bless me. He's saying, I'm going to send an angel to you. I'm going to be the enemy against your enemies. I'm going to bless you and prosper you and bless your finances and bless your food and your nourishment and your water. And, and, and then he says, I'll heal you. I will heal you. And I will bless you with a long life. That means you stay consistent. This Passover offering is not a one-time deal. Do it every year. Be faithful unto God. God will be faithful unto you. I'll give you a long life. Then he says, and I will bless you abundantly. You, <laughs> now, I mean, have you, do you understand what it means to be uh, pour out a blessing? He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Jesus said, uh, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give in your bosom? The Bible says if you bring your tithe and offering to the Lord, and that's what this is. You're bringing your first fruits to the Lord because during this Passover time, you're going to have the feast of Passover. Then you have the feast of the unleavened bread, and then you have the feast of the first fruits. And Jesus fulfilled them all. Jesus was the Passover lamb. Jesus was the Passover bread. He became the unleavened bread that laid in the tomb. He knew no sin. He had no leaven in him. There was no sin in him. And on the third day, he rose from the grave, meaning he was the first fruits of the resurrection. He even says that in the book of Revelation. I am the first fruits of the resurrection. I'm the first one that raised from the dead, literally, by myself. The power of God raised my, the Son of God from the dead. And this same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is going to quicken or bless your mortal bodies. That's what Paul wrote. Oh, I'm getting blessed right now just reading about the seven blessings of the Passover.